Hello guys, welcome once again to another SpaceX Updates video. Now, things are starting to get really interesting at SpaceX. It's hard to follow every action happening at Starbase, but I will try to cover most of them here in a few minutes. As I said in my last video, Starship Orbital Flight could probably be pushed back a few more months. How can I say this? Well, a booster transport stand has now been kept near the orbital launch mount in preparation to dismount Booster 7 from the OLM, as SPMTs with counterweights are now inside the launch complex, Booster 7 is definitely going back to the production site. But what is going on? Weren't we supposed to see the orbital launch attempt this month? I guess Booster 7 is going back to the production site to give space for more heavy machines to move in near the OLM to install the water deluge and start installing the remaining cladding on the tower. Does it make sense? I think so. The huge manifold for the deluge system is still waiting to be picked up at the Sanchez site. Is water deluge a requirement to secure the launch license? I don't know. Back at the production site, the installation of Raptors on Booster 9 is ongoing. On Lab Padre's Rover 1 cam, we saw crews moving more Raptors to the Mega Bay. I also have some new updates on Starship S24. For the last few days, we have been keeping a close eye on the missing tiles on the Noscone. It looks like there is progress and there are just two open spots left. But the sad news is that S24 will have to stay and enjoy the company of her sister ships for an extended period of time. Recently, a load test was conducted on the new Starship lifting rig. Future Starships will have no lifting pins. With Booster 7 all set to head home once again, when can we expect the orbital launch attempt? Comment down your guesses below. Yesterday, SpaceX launched its 16th mission of the year. A Falcon 9 rocket carrying 41 web satellites lifted off from SLC-40 at Cape at 2.13 p.m. Eastern Time. Three, two, one. Just full power. And lift off, one web, three. This was the 13th flight of this Falcon 9 first stage booster B-1062. After stage separation, it returned to Earth and beautifully landed at landing zone 1, stage. LZ-1 at Cape. Coming down on stage landing one, zone land one. Land and land deploy. That was a beautiful landing. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson announced yesterday that the crew for the Artemis II mission will be revealed on April 3rd. On April the 3rd, we will announce the crew for the first mission back to the moon in over a half century. Four astronauts, three from America and one from Canada, will fly around the moon and they'll test NASA's space launch system, which is our rocket, and the spacecraft called Orion. This is huge news. The first crewed mission of the Artemis program, which is currently targeting to launch next year, will travel around the moon for the first time since the Apollo era. He also said the new Artemis moon mission space suit will be revealed on March 15th. And in the coming days, we will reveal the next generation space suits for Artemis 3, which is the follow on mission that will land on the moon. The new generation lunar space suit is developed by Axiom Space. NASA awarded Axiom Space a $228 million task order under its mega $1.26 billion NASA spacesuit contract. This weekend is going to be an action-packed and fantastic one for space lovers. NASA's SpaceX Crew-5 mission is set to return home after completing its five-month-long scientific mission on the space station. The SpaceX Dragon spacecraft is scheduled to undock from the space station at 2.05 a.m. to begin the journey home. Splashdown is expected off the coast of Florida at 9.19 p.m. Eastern Time, approximately 19 hours after undocking from the station. Crew-5 was launched from Pad 39A at Kennedy Space Center on October 5 last year with four astronauts on board the Dragon capsule. Tomorrow on March 11, Relativity Space will reattempt to launch its first-ever test flight mission of Terran-1 rocket for a second time. The last launch attempt was scrubbed due to thermal conditioning issues on the second stage of the rocket. Relativity Space is looking to write history on this mission. It will be the world's first 3D printed rocket to fly to space and the world's first Methalox rocket to reach orbit. Wishing the entire team good luck on the second attempt. The three-hour launch window opens at 1 p.m. Eastern Time from Launch Complex 16 at Cape. 
and a few hours after it, Rocket Lab will also attempt to launch its second mission of the year and also the second mission from U.S. soil. An Electron rocket will attempt to launch two SAR satellites for Cape Hella Space from Launch Complex 2 on Wallops Island, Virginia. The two-hour launch window opens at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. And a little later, Crew-5 will touch down on Earth. What a day it will be for anyone who loves space. Florida's Space Coast will be one busy spaceport tomorrow. That is enough news for this video. Thank you for watching till the end. See you again soon.